A long straight wire carries a current I. The wire has a circular cross section and the radius of the cross sectional area is capital R. The current density in the wire is not constant, it's not uniform, but it's proportional to the distance from the center of the cross sectional area. So it can be modeled as alpha times r, where alpha is a constant and r is the distance from the center of the cross sectional area. Our first task is to express alpha in terms of i and capital R by integrating j, the current density, uh, over the cross sectional area. The total current passing through the wire is the integral of the current density j over the cross sectional area. Why are we taking an integral? If j had been constant, we would simply multiply j by the cross sectional area to find the total current. Because j is not constant, we have to take an integral. Because j changes uh, with the distance from the center, uh, we have to integrate over the distance from the center, which is the variable r. Imagine dividing the cross-sectional area into thin concentric rings, and each ring will be an area element. Now, why do we choose ring-shaped area elements for this problem? If you think about it, j is proportional to r, and each such ring will have a constant value of r. So over the ring, j will have a constant value. So the idea is to multiply j by the area of each ring and add all those uh, products together, which is basically uh, doing an integral. Now let's express the area of such ring in terms of the given variables. Imagine cutting the area element, uh, ring-shaped area element, uh, from one point and then opening it up. What would it look like? It'll look like a very thin, long rectangle, like so. The thickness of this rectangle is dr, and the length of the rectangle is equal to the circumference of the circular unit element, which is 2 pi r. So the area element dA can be expressed as 2 pi r dr. Let's rewrite our integral equation. We substitute alpha times r for j and 2 pi r dr for dA. Now we have an integral that we can actually uh, calculate and evaluate. Now that we, already, we also have our uh, integration variable, let's set up our lower bound and upper bound. r runs from 0 to capital R, which is the radius of the whole cross-sectional area. First, we simplify the expression and pull the constants outside of the integration sign. 2 pi alpha, those are constants, we pull those out. And we have a factor of r multiplied by another r, so that's r squared. So the integral becomes 2 pi alpha, integral of r squared dr uh, from 0 to capital R. The integral of r squared is r cubed divided by 3. We evaluate it from 0 to capital R, and we get the result i equals 2 over 3 pi times alpha times capital R cubed. Now let's isolate alpha and express it in terms of capital I and capital R. After some algebra, we get alpha equals 3 times I divided by 2 pi R cubed. Now let's use Ampere's law to find the magnetic field inside the wire at a distance r from the center of the wire. Ampere's law says the line integral of b over a closed path is equal to mu0 times i enclosed. So we have such path in the picture, the dashed circle. Uh, because we need to know the enclosed current within this path, we need to come up with an expression for the current as a function of r, and we can actually use our integral from the previous calculation. To avoid confusion, uh, I made the I changed the integration variable from r to r prime, because uh, now the lowercase r will be our uh, upper bound for the integral, because we're calculating 
the value of the current at a you know distance r from the center of the circle so we use r prime for our integration variable let's take the integral it's the same as before taking the integral we get i as a function of r equal to 2 over 3 pi alpha r cubed now let's go back to ampere's law the left hand side the line integral simply reduces to b times 2 pi r why is that b is constant at a distance r from the center it's uniform and it's tangent to the circular path so the line integral is simply equal to b times the circumference of the circular path so that's b times 2 pi r and that is equal to mu zero times i enclosed which is the current at um, the, at a distance lowercase r from the center which is what we found above now one more thing to do let's substitute for alpha uh, the expression that we found in the previous part of the problem and rearrange to isolate the magnetic field b after substituting the expression for alpha and after doing some algebra we get this expression for b you can see that b is proportional to the square of lowercase r so b equals mu zero i lowercase r squared divided by 2 pi capital r cubed now let's find the magnetic field outside of the wire at a distance lowercase r from the center this time r lowercase r is greater than capital r we apply Ampere's law again. The line integral of magnetic field is equal to mu zero times I enclosed. The line integral is again equal to B times the circumference of the circular path, which is 2 pi R for the same reasons as before. And this time I enclosed is equal to the total current in the wire, capital I. So we just rearrange to isolate B and we get mu zero times I divided by 2 pi r